Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. Let's analyze the papers this morning with Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Lots of papers to go through this morning, but let's uh, begin with the Nigerian Tribune. The headline reads, Abd about 200 students kidnapped in Niger State. Number of abducted students yet to be ascertained. That's according to the government. One killed, 11 minors released. Above the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, reps suspend constitution review hearing in Imo and Enugu State. Newly built INEC office set ablaze in Imo. Constant Naira fall creates devastating effects on livelihood. And that's a business analysis on the Nigerian Tribune. Also, restructure now or see Nigeria die. Southern Middle Belt leaders warn wants southern politicians to shun posts apart from presidency in 2023 wants use of federal state resources for cattle business this is what the southern and middle west belt leaders you know are saying they want zoning to continue and they're asking the federal government to declare a national emergency on security also on the nigerian tribune this morning 12 killed in benue and we see here Amoteku to patrol southwest borders. Ten companies shut down businesses in Nigeria's food and beverage industry in five years. Outrage as gunmen kill Gulak, ex-presidential aide in Imo State. Killers won't go free, and that's according to the president. And uh, Kiridolu here says, killing senseless and wicked. And we see a building on fire here, and it says um, it's a scene of an, act, of an incident uh, in Ladipo Spare Parts Markets in uh, Mushin, Lagos State on Sunday. That's uh, the Spare Parts Markets uh, burning. And lastly, on the Nigerian Tribune, tension in Southeast over IPOP's stay-at-home order. And Umahi tells traders, stay at home if you wish, no more penalties. National Assembly Caucus, marginalization, reason for spate of violence in the region. Those are the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. All right, to the punch uh, newspapers now. Let's uh, see if we could, we could uh, put that on your screen. Uh, it says the states uh, bank on PPP projects as a cash crunch bites harder. States afraid of negative effects of mass retrenchment in 20, on 2023 political agenda. It says also we're doing a PPP already. Some projects are financed by the World Bank, says Akiti. Moving on from there. Rising debt service costs weighing on federal government's revenue, says the PwC. And also, Amcon drags 3,000 defaulters to court over 5 trillion naira debt. Again, abductors invade Niger school. 200 students kidnapped, one killed. 119 passengers from high-risk countries refuse isolation. And that's uh, from the Lagos State government. Buhari talks tough, APC, ACF condemn ex-Jonathan's uh, AIDS killing. And resident doctors threaten resumption of strike, alleged uh, unpaid salaries. Also on the point this morning, NDLEA bust Abuja drug syndicate arrest 10,000, uh, arrest 10, okay, 107 kilograms of drugs seized. Suspected headsmen raid Ebony, Benue, Enugu communities kill 46. And six arrested uh, stealing rail tracks in Ogun. Crime weapons recovered. Finally, this morning, NNPC pledges crude supply to 2,000 or 20,000 barrels per day Lagos refinery. Oof, those are the big ones on the punch newspapers this morning. On the Nation newspaper, all pro over more killings, abductions in Oyo and Imo. Jonathan's ex aide Gulak shot dead, 30 killed in Eboi, Benue boundary. Scores of pupils kidnapped in Niger. Buhari, perpetrators won't go unpunished. Still above the headline on the Nation newspaper, resident doctors threaten strike. Amoteku to patrol southwest borders. Bandits demand 180 million naira for judge others. Buhari to open Lagos Ibadan standard gauge on June 10. Government firms raise 4.6 trillion naira from capital market. Varsity workers seek licensed guns for protection. That's workers at universities seeking guns for protection. 
Also, we see three pictures here on the Nation newspaper. It's a picture of the Nigerian Immigration Service in Enugu State attacked over the weekend by unknown gunmen. We see a service vehicle burnt. We see an office of the Nigerian Immigration Service uh, destroyed as well. I mean, it's just uh, an eyesore there. Also on the Nation newspaper, Forex speculators responsible for Naira crisis, says APCON, ASU to engage federal government. NDLEA arrests 10 online drug traffickers. Lastly, on the Nation newspaper, South Middle Belt leaders demand power shift from North. All right, now to the Daily Independent uh, newspapers. Um, it says there, NAFEX rate adoption can't lift manufacturing. And that's from analysts worried no improvement in Forex supply and ask uh, CBN to address Forex backlog in market. Also, Southeast federal lawmakers decry killings in region, condemn attacks on security personnel, formations, and INEC. Also, Gulak killers won't go free, Buhari vows as police open probe. IPOB says we have no hand in Gulak's death. Still on the Daily Independent, bandits kill one, abduct scores of students in Niger State. Airports, NACTA faults employment of 40 ATCs, lament over poor equipment. Also, another INEC office in Imo set ablaze. Police repel attack on zombie division in Imo. Q4. Lagos local government polls, APC aspirants demand cancellation of primaries. And Southern and Middle Belt leaders call for new constitution and presidency to shift to the South. Fire guts Lagos auto spare, uh, spare parts market. And 81 bodies recovered from Kebby boat mishap. Those are the ones on the Daily Independent this morning. Um, good morning to you once more, Mr. Kolawale. Thanks for having me, my sister. Oh, it's been, you know, a very interesting read through this paper, seeing all the insecurity trends from mm. Niger State, the abduction of 200 students, mm. to the attack on the Nigerian Immigration Service Office in Enugu. Yeah, exactly. The killing of Ahmed Gulak, lots and lots of stories here. Where do we begin? Mm. Yeah, uh, honestly speaking, I will want to say that... Um, you put yourself in the position of a foreigner visiting Nigeria at this time or today and having the opportunity to go through our newspapers. What impression would you have with all the headlines, with all the stories that we have in the papers uh, this morning? It is that of gloom, despondency, and a nation that is in very, very deep crisis. In fact, a nation that is at the precipice of uh, disintegration. And uh, that becomes highly very worrisome. All the stories, there is hardly anyone that one would not uh, like to comment on. But since we have time limitation, I will just summarize some of these things. I start with the uh, fire incident at uh, Latin Prosper Park Market. That is a tragedy of very, very great proportion. That's not or it shouldn't have happened. But really, we should have a dedicated fire service station in that market. But when a market as big as that gets burnt, it is your national asset, your GDP, and your resources that have gone up in flames. And if you look at the exchange rate today, and most of the commodities that you find in that market are imported, you could imagine the multiplier effect and the losses that those traders uh, would have incurred. All these things are things that can be, that we could have envisaged and taken precautions against. And then look at the uh, Niger State uh, kidnapping of 200 students. How do you move 200 students from one point to the other? You will need several vehicles to be able to move them. The governor of Niger State has also been raising alarm that he told us that there is swap and then the Boko Haram have relocated to Niger State. And that they might begin some dastardly actions in those places. The American uh, army have also raised uh, an alarm that the Boko Haram are moving south-south and southward and southwest. And uh, it is not impossible that uh, very soon a lot of violence will begin to take place in those places. Since we got all this alarm from these two different sources, what efforts have we made to nip them in the board. I have said it times without number, there's no justification why any 
child should go to school and get kidnapped. By now, we should have been able to develop a kind of security blueprint to protect our students when they are in schools. As bad as it is in Afghanistan, the parent association, the teachers and the government were able to evolve a blueprint with which to secure students when they are in school. So that the Taliban who say that girls will not go to school were prevented from frustrating girls from going to school. So, Mr. Kowale, yeah. Mr. Kowale, still talking about protecting students in schools. I mean, we saw in one yeah. of the papers that workers in universities are now saying they want to have access to licensed guns so they can protect themselves. What are your comments on that? No, that will worsen the situation. It will worsen the situation. As of today, go and do your uh, research. There is hardly any of those so-called hoodlums or uh, toilet people or cold boys who don't have shotguns uh, with them or who don't have very dangerous objects or knives and all that. And most of these so-called university teachers and students who are also saying they want guns, most of them already have. By the time you now license or allow everybody to carry guns, the situation will degenerate further. In fact, what you might be inviting is the kind of situation that we have in America in which somebody, one crazy person, will just pick his gun, go to a public place, and start marrying people down. Because we really don't have the wherewithal to monitor those who are likely to cause such mischief. The CCTV cameras are not there on the street to monitor people movement and apprehend criminals. We also don't have data and cigars those who have the potential to commit a mass killing. So, and a nation should take a decision as regards the direction in which they want to develop. I don't think we should grow, I mean, in line with the way and manner in which the American people do things, in which everybody carry gun. With the fact that everybody is licensed to carry gun in America, as that society becomes safe, is it safer than any of these Swedish country or like a country like Britain? In fact, it is likely to lead to anarchy. It shouldn't be encouraged uh, uh, at all. all right. With regards to the bombings and uh, the killings in the southeast and then um, the killing of Gulag, my uh, take has always been that uh, the approach that the Nigerian government, the approach that the Nigerian army have adopted in containing the challenges in the southeast will not use any uh, the, the kind of result that they thought it would yield. For example, we never see them react in this kind of very proactive or hyperactive manner in the handling of the Boko Haram uh, uh, insurgency. And you are seeing what they've done going to villages and throwing bomb on people, mm. killing people, uh, suspected IPOP members who are on their beds and what have you. What we require to do in the Southeast is a dialogue. Let's go to the round table. Let's know what the grievances of the people are, and let us address it. I've also, I've also advocated that probably we require to do a referendum, and then whatever comes out of the referendum should be what this nation should adopt. I appeal to Mr. President to uh, rein in uh, this uh, chaos and anarchy. Oh, no, it will not work. If he had the, the, the wherewithal, if he had the capacity to do it, all these 10 years that we have been in this crisis, he probably would have uh, uh, used some of those strategies to, to, to curtail the insurgency and the banditry and the chaos that we have in the different parts of the country. You will also recollect that I have also argued that if you change the service chiefs more than a hundred times, you are never likely to have respite with regards to security challenges all over the country. Uh, the Kula challenges Kula. are far deeper, the roads are far deeper, the chaos is far deeper that you need to think out of, uh, we need people who have the vision and who can think out of their caps or uh, bring in some things that are starting to the table right. to be able to Mr. rein in Mr. Kola, Ole, the security I want, I want you to speak a, uh, I want you to speak a little bit more on the um, um, killing of Ahmed Gulak. The police, you know, claimed to have uh, found the killers and they were killed over the weekend um, in a uh, shootout with the Nigerian police force. Uh, the, there's also insinuations that they are members of the ESN or IPOB. Um, how do you react to that? 
Well, uh, several times the Nigerian police have made claims. Uh, the Nigerian army have also made claims that they killed Shekau or they arrested this person one time or the other. If you have also been participating in some of the press conferences and the um, a display of suspects that the Nigerian police uh, usually do, you will be very careful in accepting or in believing in what the police, for example, will say. They will go into the armory and some of the weapons they have seized in the past, they will arrange them and then bring in some suspects in front of the camera and say these are the people that they have arrested and all that. If it is true that you have apprehended or you saw those who killed Ahmed Gulag, the strategy will not be to just go in out there and then uh, annihilate or kill these people. It will be as much as possible to get them apprehended so that you can investigate the root cause. Why is it that they are taking the decision? Or who sent them to kill Ahmed Gulag? So the strategy of the Nigerian army and the police for me will not, because it will not allow to get to the root of some of these challenges. We need to be more proactive. You need to think out of the uh, uh, extraordinary thinking at a period like this. I seriously suspect that uh, we still haven't had the last with regard to the killing of Amegulak in the south um, uh, east. And they uh, also look at the papers. Every day now on a daily basis, the young people over Nigeria are being apprehended, being arrested for drug trafficking, uh, for drug trafficking. And the humongous amount of drugs that they traffic now are not just uh, in grams, it is in kilograms. Yes. This is a reflection or this is a manifestation that the young people are also becoming more and more desperate to either become rich or to get out of the poverty that they have found themselves. If you also relate that with what us poppy has been saying in prison, that he took to the path of crime because of poverty, and that even certain politicians have benefited from him, and that he is surprised that those politicians who would not really visit to buy, to open up with him, and whom he had uh, been given special treatment, have never come to his assistance. What I'm trying out of this is that, look, some of these challenges is born out of the ostentatious living that we have found our politicians uh, live, mm. and the unmerited salaries and allowances that they have been given to themselves. These are money that should go into creating jobs so as to keep the children so that they will, they will find some jobs for them to be able to live. Okay. Also look at the songs that our musicians uh, do these days. You hear them sing openly. Kinshati Lowo, all that is important is for me to get rich. Mm. I don't care whether it is blood money or whether it is Yahoo Yahoo money or whether it is a ritual money or whether it comes through some other tabulical right. means. Mr. Kalawale, so, yes, indeed, th this issue of drug trafficking is a serious one we need to, we need to fight. And mm. another serious issue we've seen in the papers today is a, a, a statement from the Lagos State Government saying 119 passengers from high-risk countries have refused isolation. Really, when we, when we compare this to other parts of the world, we know that when they go to places like the UK, they will force to be in isolation or they will be fined, they will be confined to their hotel rooms or in isolation centers across those countries. But why do you think when it comes to, you know, when those people come to Nigeria, they disobey our, our, our laws, flout our rules, and, you know, just do whatever they like? Well, ordinarily, all over the world, when you look, the average man does not like to respect or to obey laws. He has to be compelled to do it. You need a high level of understanding, a high level of civility, a high level of civic commitment to have respect for law and order. So when people have the opportunity to get away from the long arms of the law, they will ordinarily do it. Mm. What, has escaped, what has happened with these visitors or with these guests who came into Nigeria who have escaped should be blamed on the security. If we have adequate security at the airport or in the seaport or at the motor parks and all that, as soon as these people land in the country and all that, the thing you do is to land them, put them on queue, put a tag on them, and then the security people will pilot them to wherever they have to uh, do their uh, quarantine. My cousin who visited Nigeria from Britain a few weeks ago and all that, 
immediately he landed at his true airport and all. You will not believe it. That two policemen followed him right from the airport to his house to know where he stayed. Wow. Immediately they were able to ascertain where he stayed. And then they asked him to show them where he intend to do his quarantine. They were coming to his house periodically, almost every three, three days, to make sure that he complied with the quarantine order that the British uh, uh, law or the uh, uh, government has put in place. Do we have that kind of a facility here? As soon as you land in the airport at the seaport and all that, all that the security people are, are concerned with is how they will extort money from you, how they will get gifts from you, how you will give them even the, the necklace you are wearing or the resource you are wearing, or the sneakers, the beautiful sneakers that you have brought. It is what you have brought into the country for them that they be asking for. Yeah. So these are the reasons why some of these lapses uh, happen. The security people should be held culpable and punished adequately uh, for it. Completely agree. Um, Mr. Tunekola, uh, let's also quickly speak about the um, uh, bandits demanding 180 million for a judge that was kidnapped and um, others. Um, you know, earlier I was speaking about, you know, what we must do in, if we are serious about ending this, you know, kidnappings that happen so often now in Nigeria. Um, do, do you see that there might be any answers to these questions anytime soon? No, I don't think so. Uh, when you find judges being kidnapped in the courtroom and you have the DSS officials being kidnapped, you have policemen being kidnapped, you have soldiers being kidnapped and even killed and all that. What it means is that uh, anarchy has set in the country. And uh, if you are going to contain anarchy, you need extraordinary uh, uh, measures. For example, the courtroom is supposed to be a highly secure place. And I want to, I'm not a Lagos uh, a APC person, but I want to praise the Lagos State people. Most of the courts that you go to in Lagos State today are not that. There are well-armed security men who don't disturb anybody, but who sit or take position in very, very auspicious places to contain whatever uh, breakdown of law and order anybody might want to embark upon. When you go to some of these other states of the, of the country and other, you don't find that kind of an arrangement in place. And it is not just the police alone that should be practiced in some of these things. It's not impossible that the chief judge of Lake State that requested for that kind of right. security cover for all the courts in Lagos. Most of the kidnapping that we also see in the northern parts of the country, what measures have we seen the governor put in place to make sure that this thing does not continue to repeat All right, itself? All right, Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we are out of time. Thanks for uh, starting up on Monday for, uh, with us. Uh, we wish you a great week ahead. We always enjoy your thoughts on the, these issues. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You have a lovely week too. You too. All right, we'll take a break here and uh, let's see what events happened in this day in history. I'm going back to the year 1961 when a major, major shift occurred in the politics of South Africa. We're still here. Um, I'm going back to the year 2012 when I'm going to be talking about the longest state of emergency that you may have ever heard of mm. in Egypt. We'll be back.